All right. Well, as you can see, we're going to be doing something a little bit different this morning. And um, just to kind of prelude into this, this is the last message in our Real Stories, Real Faith series for January. Now, I have to catch up on them. I've missed them. I've got to jump onto the YouTube podcast and watch the few that I've missed. And my encouragement to you is if you, if you haven't seen all of the stories, jump on and have a listen. Because this is a powerful time of year as we listen to stories and testimonies about what God has been doing in people's lives. And in particular, why do they still follow Jesus? Because for many of us, we've had turning points in our life, opportunities where we could have, could have thrown up the white flag and gone, I'm not doing this anymore. And so these stories and testimonies encourage us to keep going, to keep following after Jesus. And so this morning, uh, we're going to be interviewing Brianna Ryan as part of her story and testimony. So, Brie, welcome to the stage today. Thank you. <laughs> Can Thank we say you. welcome and good morning? <laughs> I'm really excited to be here. It's such, such an honor. Yeah, it's going to be a fun time. And uh, we've decided to do an interview just again to mix up the variety of styles as to how we do our stories and testimonies. So some of you may know Brie, some of you may not. So to get us started, um, Brie, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, just your background and how did you end up on this stage? <laughs> uh, absolutely. So my name is Brianna. I'm married to, so like Ryan said, Matthew Ryan here in the front. We've been married for nearly two years, which is really exciting. <laughs> I'm 24 years old and I'm originally from Canberra. I am really passionate about um, business leadership and management, so I'm currently finishing my, my bachelor in that at the moment. But I also just really, really, really love Jesus and love seeing people experience Jesus in the day-to-day. -day. So, um, yeah, I really love gardening. I, I love cooking. Um, I love spending time with family. I um, am really bad with technology. <laughs> I, uh, what are some other things? I, I, love, I love kind of being a bit handy. I love, you know, doing some things around the house, like doing some like renovation and restoration. Um, but yeah, that's kind of me. I love a good movie. I love animation, love animation. Do not ask my family how much I love it because they'll just roll their eyes. And Wait, <laughs> when you say animation, you mean Oh, any like kind cartoon? of animated movie. Yeah, yeah okay. like Disney, Pixar, like whatever. Is I've like watched them way too many times. A favourite? Or, pro yes, see my yeah, mother-in-law uh. straight away is like, yes. <laughs> yeah. And it is? Encanto, Encanto would probably yeah. be right up there, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've watched it way too many times. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I just, just love kind of sitting back and relaxing and mm. um, just, just enjoying, um, yeah, those yeah. things. Cool. So, um, Breeze has mentioned, obviously, married to Matt. And a lot of us are familiar with Matt. We see him up and speak, but I think it's fun to hear the other side of some of these stories. So, Bree, how did you meet and come across this fine specimen down here? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, he literally showed up on my doorstep. So, so I know, crazy. Is Almost like, like I ordered. Like, or like a yeah, <laughs> right? No. <laughs> so, um, Matthew was a part of a discipleship college in Melbourne, and I was living in Canberra at the time. And our church takes on... On, um, students from this discipleship college each year and so I was kind of like I was used to it by now and so um, one day I, we got a knock on the door I was expecting these students and I opened up and I was like oh like, this one's a bit cute <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we always laugh as well because Matt was kind of briefed earlier saying um, so Rachel my mum who's actually here today um, she, he was told that Rachel has two daughters, just, just letting you know. And so he's thinking like a two-year-old or a four-year-old. So he's like <laughs> thinking that's what he's walking into. And so he opens the door and I've got a younger sister. Um, so he's kind of like wasn't that shocked. And he's like, oh, they've got a babysitter. <laughs> thinking I was the babysitter. <laughs> he was like, oh, the babysitter's kind of cute. Um, <laughs> but then we, uh, obviously I introduced myself. And uh, in the two weeks that he was there, we... Um, got to know each other and then uh, a few years, he went back to Melbourne and a few years passed and we lived in different states during that time but over the like two years we then got engaged and, and married. That's great. Yeah. And so we've had you up here for about 12 months or so now in our church. I think yeah. we're about to have an anniversary for you guys yeah, here, aren't we? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this time last year, Matt was giving his um, real stories, real faith. There so that's really cool. <laughs> bit of symmetry there. Yeah. So what we want to do today, church, we're going to zoom in a bit on Brianna's story. And we want to understand a bit about her faith journey. And like all the other real stories that we're doing, really what's kept her going and why is she still following Jesus? So Brie, to give us maybe to set the scene... Can you help us to understand, how did you come to faith? Were you, I mean, did you grow up in a church? Were you always a believer? Did you have a turning point moment? 
What's some of your yeah, story? Yeah, so I was really blessed enough to be born into a Christian home. And so going to children's church, I think the first time I gave my life to Jesus was, I probably would have been about seven, but I have this really awesome memory of we were all just lying down on the floor and the kids' church pastor just said, like, I just want to give you an opportunity to just receive Jesus. And I remember getting up and and bawling my eyes out and I was like this is really weird like I don't actually know what's going on and they kind of explained it to me and so I kind of gave my life to Jesus then um, which was really great (laughs) Um, but then after some kind of I guess messy wild kind of lost teenage years so when I was about 12 I started really walking away from the faith and walking away from that relationship um, which was a, a really um, difficult time and a bit crazy to look back on but when I was about 18 um, I had some people come into my life that made me a little bit hungry again for what Jesus had to offer. And so um, because of that, I started going to a young adults church in Canberra and uh, I started kind of getting little bits and pictures of what Jesus might have to offer, but it still didn't seem like enough for me. So I would still go along and I, I would show up and even like show up at a youth group as a, as a youth group leader and um, one day, I was probably about, yeah, again, like 18, 19 at the time. And this church, in a super loving way, just said, you know, Bree, thank you so much for your heart to, to lead on the youth team. But um, we just see the way that you're living your life and we actually have to ask you to step down. And I look back and I'm like, that was the best decision they, they made. And for me, it's, it was the best thing for me too. But... I remember sitting in a service station car park and I was thinking, okay, this is it. I have a choice right now. I can either be really, really angry and really bitter and just and just run away. And I genuinely, genuinely considered that. I'm like, the world, it's easy, it's freedom. I can do whatever I want. But in that moment, I really felt strongly from Jesus kind of saying, okay, you can choose that. But Brie, if you choose that, you're not entering into freedom, you're actually entering into shackles. You're actually becoming a slave to what the world has. And he said, if you just trust me, come on this journey, then I will provide you with freedom. And so literally in that car park, I I remember it was so dark and I was like, all right, Jesus, I seriously choose you, let's go. (laughs) And so I feel like that was kind of like my real, um, kind of accepting Jesus into my life again. So just um, keep me in that space for a minute, because I think for a lot of us, if someone came to us and stood us down and said, look, your life isn't matching up with the call to Christ, Mm. I think for a lot of us, our response would probably be something between this finger and this finger. Like there'd be a, you know what I mean? Like (laughs) there would be a, you know what I mean? That that rise up in us to say, you can't tell me how to live. Absolutely. You know what I mean? How dare you speak to me like that? But you, you just said that was the best decision they could have made. Can you just tease that out a bit because I think for a lot of us we wouldn't receive that as a good decision in that moment what what do you mean by that absolutely like and I can confirm I was so offended in that point and at that point in time I was such an offendable person and Mm. so I my first reaction was bitterness and it was anger and it was it was you know how dare you but really deep like going a bit deeper and looking at it, it was just a it was honestly just a sadness mm. and, a, and a worthlessness of mm. kind of like a, I failed, like mm. a, I failed again. Um, but because of that, because of that offence and because of that challenge and almost trial, it gave me the opportunity to consider and look at where I was really at. Because <laughs> you know how it sometimes just takes something going wrong for you to actually assess where is my heart? Like, where, how am I actually living? They really did kind of, like, pull up a mirror to me to when they called me out on kind of my rubbish and my behaviour. It was, it was a mirror, kind of being able to fully look back again and think, oh, wow, like, I'm not living a, you know, godly life. And even just to give some examples, like, I would literally show up on a youth on a Friday but then go out partying and clubbing on the weekend and I would preach purity um, and you know, life to the girls and then find comfort by sleeping with a man like the next day. And so I think they gave me this priceless opportunity to see that as what it was. Yeah. 
And I just want to commend you for, for the humility to be able to receive that, because I think for a lot of us that would be challenging to be called out on that. Mm-hmm. But I can see that part of your heart that goes, I want to know Christ, I want to know him deeper. And I suspect that what God did in that moment is going to thread through further in your story as well. Absolutely. Mm. So um, another question for you. So in your time following Jesus since that moment, so this big moment, kind of big turning point for you, have you had any special either God encounters or miracles or moments that have been dear to your heart? with Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. And I would like to say that in that moment I had this amazing encounter and then everything changed. But that's sadly just not how it works. <laughs> I wish it was, but it really wasn't. And so I think um, there were so many moments in my life after that that were able to deepen and strengthen those, I guess, like core beliefs inside of me. But I think a lot of it was Um, I went on a uh, a big uh, Canada trip with my dad and so we went away and so uh, my dad and I love adventuring. We just love going out and pretty much my whole life we have been doing that. Just I have, so I have two older brothers and a younger sister as well and but it was kind of like dad and I just kind of against the world which is really awesome but uh, during this time in Canada um, I felt God I I was sitting by this lake in Vancouver Island and Um, I'd just done this massive um, zip line and I'm so terrified of heights for anyone that (laughs) uh, needs to know that. I hate heights. Um, And so I did this and did it with Dad and um, Dad sat down after me, right next to me, and he said, "Um, Brie, I just want to say how proud I am of you for doing that because I know that that was really scary. And Sorry, I'm also a crier. I just need you to know that too. (laughs) Um, Yeah, he's like, I knew that that was really scary for you. And... It was like straight away I felt the presence of God being like, like that's me to you too, Brie. Like I want you to know how proud I am of you. But then he further called on and in, in that time I was thinking about, I think I need to take a leap of faith and do some kind of discipleship and spiritual formation because no matter how much I was trying and no matter how much I was showing up to church and showing up to youth and young adults, things just weren't shifting for me. Like there were just some real strongholds. Like I was still... Um, still drowning in worthlessness and low self-esteem and anxiety and and you know I couldn't break out of this need to be loved for by a man and things like that and so I was like I think I need to do some discipleship and so after this event where dad was saying you know I'm really proud of you he um, God then said um, I just want you to know that I'm proud of you in advance for what you're about to do (laughs) and I straight away knew what he was talking about And so um, through that encounter, I straight away kind of had a look at some discipleship places and around the same time, Matt came around and introduced me to LL Ministries and that's where I did uh, two years of discipleship and training and it was the most life-transforming thing for me. So, yeah, sorry, did that answer the question? Absolutely. Sometimes I ramble. Well, it's just, um, I'm always curious to hear about someone's God encounters and God experiences because I think... Those little, whether they're a mountaintop moment, sometimes we call them, they're things that we can look back on and hold on to because you know what? Not every day we feel that close to God. There's just these moments where we, we encounter Him and experience Him. And to me, it's like a little treasure chest that you hold on to and you can dip back into that treasure chest of that moment with God. Um, so that's why I was just curious to know for you, like what was in that, that treasure chest of moments with God? And I think particularly because the next question I'll ask you is, so since that turning point in the car park and following Jesus and done some discipleship, Have there been moments for you that have been obstacles, challenge, struggles, or temptations to kind of give up on this call? Um, And if so, just tell us a bit about that. Absolutely. I feel like it wouldn't be a journey without the the lows and the valleys (laughs) and and the struggles. And um, I think for me, my major struggle in my discipleship journey was this real sense of worthlessness. And a lot of the time, I think for myself coming under that shame of like I actually just don't deserve this like I don't deserve to grow or to change or to have more in life or to experience more in life or even like I don't deserve good relationships I don't deserve um, a healthy home environment or healthy work environment and so I think the some of the biggest challenges and a lot of the time I think it's for a lot of people is more like the thoughts and that self-doubt so I wouldn't say that there was like a, a major Um, like sickness or event or something that came up but it was just those small day-to-day things of waking up and and feeling this 
deep kind of like not like you don't deserve this journey like you're not worthy of this journey you're not strong enough for this journey um and i guess the the small um times of just having to overcome that through the help of um i guess especially like ll ministries and the discipleship but also just the small encouragements of going to jesus every day and being like what do you actually say about me and so it was overcoming that you know that shame and that that fear by just going to him each day and being like actually what do you say lord like, yeah, even coming up to this morning i was sitting down and and i was like jesus i'm pretty nervous about this morning like i don't know like what i what to share or what i have to offer and just in in the silence i just heard him say i'm with you i am with you and i think that's the voice and that's the tool that i get to access while I go through those deep valleys of self-doubt and, and pain and fear and shame. Yeah. And honestly, the best gift you can give us this morning is just understanding that there is valleys in your life and to hear that mm. idea of the voice of the Father going with her through those. Because mm. uh, I know you mentioned no one event. Like I think a lot of us, we'd prefer just one event, something goes <laughs> wrong, you know, we get over it, we move on, life's good happily ever after, totally. you know. And, um, I've, I've called it like spiritual bypassing before where it's like in the Christian world we want to jump from mountaintop to mountaintop with God and we want to skip over those valleys but I think what you just described in journeying down into the depths of the pain Absolutely. that's where the real transformation happens exactly step by step day yeah. by day just showing up and, yeah. and choosing to be transformed yeah. <laughs> yeah and contending with those voices in our head or that come around us that say you can't do this and you're not worthy Absolutely. it's the opposite of the gospel yeah um, you just uh, said a moment ago that you, um, as part of combating that day by day, you were coming to Jesus. Mm. Give us a bit of a picture like that, because I think, again, we might throw out, oh, we have a quiet time, we spend time with Jesus. But many of us are probably curious, how do other people spend time with Jesus? Can you give us a bit of a look inside the window? What, is, what does time with Jesus look like for you? Absolutely. And I love it's changed so much yeah. over the past five years. And in the beginning, it was a, I don't even know how to do this. Like, do I just you know, open up the Bible, flick a few pages and <laughs> like go from there. Um, and But I think today, like right now, a way that I experience Jesus is um, kind of coming at it as any relationship as I would with, with anyone around me. And so literally a bit controversial, but I would just, I would just date Jesus. Like I would, I would go out to a coffee, I love coffee, and I would sit there and meditate maybe on a verse or listen to a worship song or just journal. I'm a big fan of journaling. Journaling is cool. I really recommend it. Um, but I would really just, first of all, just kind of quiet myself and just ask Jesus, like, Lord, what do you want to do today? And I might have this, you know, sense to just open up the Bible and maybe I'll open it up and there'll be a verse or a word that stands out and then I'll just spend the next however time I have laid aside to, to do that. And then other times it's like, I just want you to drink coffee and, and talk to me. And then maybe it'll be lamenting, it'll be like pouring out my disappointments and my hurts, my pain from the week. But I think I sometimes, like I love the idea that we have like God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And sometimes I go through seasons where I relate to him more as my father, more in the Holy Spirit. But I think right now in the season that I'm in, I'm relating to him more as like my bridegroom like someone that wants to get to know, well, that knows me fully, but I can kind of experience that relationally. So, yeah. So. I love that picture of going through the different seasons of understanding God in his different forms and ways. And I love the, what you said, that you, you mentioned how when you spend time with God, you kind of ask him, what do you want to do today? Um, how do you know what he wants you to do? Just <laughs> <laughs> This lightning <laughs> comes <laughs> up on me. <laughs> Text message. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> no. Um, a lot of the time, it's uh, genuinely just, it, it might be a, a thought that just pops into my mind yeah. or a feeling. I really believe that that's the way that God mm. can communicate to us. And mm. I think a lot of it comes from just a quietening of my heart mm. and hearing him yeah, in a way of just, mm. oh, just, I think I should read the Bible today. Like, I really feel this strong urge to do that. Or yeah. I actually just feel this really strong urge to journal my mm. thoughts today. Mm. And um, I will take that as a, I'm just going to take a leap of faith and believe that that's what he wants to do with me. And nine times out of ten, because I'm human and definitely get it wrong <laughs> a lot of the time. But 
it will end up being life giving yeah. because it's again it's just intentional time with Jesus. Mm. Cuz I think a lot of us we feel like oh maybe I can't hear God's voice or I don't know what he's going to say to me. And so I love that courage to just follow those quiet prompts and go, you know what? Let's give this a go. Maybe it is this passage or maybe it is just quiet with coffee this morning. Yeah, to absolutely. just lean into Jesus for that. So. Absolutely. Mm. So in your journey, um, just thinking about Bible passages or things that have kept you steady uh, in your Christian faith, have there been any scripture passages for you that have been significant? Uh, if so, why? Yeah, absolutely. So Romans 12, 2 has to be the, the big overarching one. And uh, it's, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what's, what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. And so um, the story behind this is when I was about 16 years old and so I wasn't uh, really engaging with Jesus at the time uh, and living like a pretty um, wild and um, pretty like fearful life at this point. And um, I was just helping someone, I think like clean their house at the time and they just randomly said, Aubrey, I just want to give you this Bible verse. And I was a bit shocked by it. I was like, oh, okay, I'll take it. And it was this verse and I don't know what it was, but something inside of me just leapt at this verse because I think for the first time I believed that I didn't have to conform to the patterns of this world. I think as a teenager and stuck in the world, we just believe that we have to, yeah, we just have to conform. Like that's how you survive. That's how you fit in. That's how you have friends. Like that's how you, especially for myself, I had such a fear of men. I wanted to be loved and liked by everyone. And so it was like, this is what I have to do. But it was the first time I actually believed that I didn't have to conform to the pattern of this world, but actually I could be transformed by the renewing of my of your mind or your heart, your beliefs, your behaviours, so that you can int- to test and approve God's perfect will for me. But even just the idea that God has a pleasing and, and perfect will for me is so encouraging. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think for a lot of us, we, we view this passage a little bit backwards. We go, God, tell me your will. Just give me the give me all the answers and then I'll trust you enough with some of the broken Absolutely. and the messy, right? Yeah. But I love that in here, it's actually the opposite of what we expect. That God says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's all those dark valleys, those hard places, those doubts. You know, do the transforming first and then you'll be able to understand my will. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I love it so much because it's it's then just followed me up until now. Now, like I work as a, um, like I, I look after young adults in their discipleship journey at LL um, Ministries. There's a course called Undivided for 18 to 25 year olds. And I now get to walk people through this very thing. I get to help them um, be empowered to not have to conform to the patterns of the world, but to be transformed by, you know, the Holy Spirit. So, so that they can go out and, and live how God's called them to live. Well, it's passing the gift that's been given to you in many ways. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So tell me a bit more about LL. You've touched on that. So you've, you've talked about the discipleship programs, all the rest. So for those of us not familiar, let's just claim ignorance right now. Just what is LL? Mm. Um, tell us a bit about that and then tell us more about what you do there. Absolutely. So L O E L L E L, not two L's, which a lot of people I even like, when I L, first L. Yeah, when <laughs> I first uh, showed up, I like Googled L L. So um, it's a Christian ministry over in Menangle. So we're all about healing and discipleship. And so our vision is getting the heart of God to the heart of man. And so a part of that is running weekend courses to really help and equip Um, people to grow deeper in their relationship with God and to really overcome some blockages like, you know, you saw on the screen, like fear and anxiety, forgiveness, um, you know, other, like fear, other fears, um, like rejection, worthlessness, Uh, I could go on and on, emotions. (laughs) But yeah, it's just an, an amazing ministry that's really there to cultivate, I guess, that spiritual formation, yeah. And so you, t- you went through the course, is that right? Yeah, yeah. What was it like for you going through the course? Uh, it, it was amazing. It, it genuinely changed my life. So I did two years of the Young People's Program there and I recommend it to every 18 to 25-year-old I come into contact with. Um, it just meant that, honestly, I, I could be here today like, and that I could be in the type of marriage that I am today and be the type of friend that I am and... Um, 
co-worker, leader, things like that. Um, so, yeah. So, um, for someone that turns up to an LL weekend, what, what do you expect? What, what's it like? Because I think a lot of us are nervous about environments we've never been Absolutely. to before. Yeah. We don't know, am I going to like, um, am I going to fit in? What, what, what's it gonna, what am I going to do with my time? Can you tell me a bit about the actual experience? Absolutely. So, something that's so important to us at LL is being able to welcome the people. And so, that's actually such a big part of what we want to bring um, to the community and to the church is just being able to bring a welcoming environment. So even like the first day, you'll see our um, undivided students waving you in and giving you a tour and making you feel at home, really. We live on a very, very beautiful um, property that's really for cultivating peace and cultivating a bit of like a home home feel. And so a lot of that is just, like I said, being welcomed in into this big, beautiful property and then we do our very best to, to teach. So we start on a Friday night and then we go all day Saturday through some teaching segments. But we also are really passionate about giving you guys opportunities to go off and reflect and then go off and encounter God through what's being taught. And then we'll also um, do some prayer ministry during that too, just to help with anything that may come up during the teaching. Um, but I just think I'm very biased, obviously, but we, we have an amazing team that are able to hone in and just really like love love the people well so well and that's why i wanted to tease it out because i, I realize you're biased but like <laughs> you, you're an example of someone who's gone through a process like that and you've experienced that kind of transformation of going you know what there's all this stuff under the hood in my life mm. that god's been able to uh, heal and fix and stretch mm. and i think for a lot of us we desire that. We desire to have healing in different parts of our life. Or we desire to know God in a deeper way. Or we just desire to experience Him in ways that we haven't before. So I guess that's why I'm, I'm curious about that. Absolutely. Um, what would you say to someone who is thinking about a course like this, um, whether it's the formation one we do or other things, because LL's got a whole suite of different activities, who's looking at it going, oh, I just, I'm not sure about it. I don't know if it's for me. Um, what would you say to someone feeling that way? I would just say do it. <laughs> I think. <laughs> sorry, that's a bit blunt. <laughs> no, I think. Um, I think I would just encourage you to to genuinely really consider something like this because um, I think it, it's so easy, and and I can completely understand this because I was in this boat too to think that spiritual formation isn't for me. Like I, I've grown up in a Christian family. I, I know the ins and outs of church, and I know that Jesus loves me, but you know, the, the reality is whether we're in the church or outside of the church, we're, we're constantly being formed. We're constantly being formed by our family, by our friends, by our workplaces, by the books we read, by the movies we watch, um, and by the church, of course, as well. Um, but spiritual formation is taking that opportunity to intentionally choose to be transformed rather than formed, but transformed more and more into Jesus and so it's not just having this understanding of Jesus but it's being able to live out what he calls of us which is just the most freeing and and wonderful wonderful thing and so I think even just for the the spiritual formation thing that you guys are running this year it's it's five weekends we have we have 52 weekends in a year but it'll be the best five weekends that that all it'll it'll be the best decision to take those five weekends out of the 52 to develop more of that deeper relationship with God. And I suppose one last question now, just to tie this part of your story. Really, I didn't prep you for this, but what is God still working on? And the reason why I ask this is, it's easy to get up here and share a story and be like, I started in A, I'd had a turning point in B, and now I've arrived at C. And again, package done, happily ever after. But I'm just keenly aware that's not the case, that we're always no. in that forming, transforming kind of process. So I suppose as you look at 2023, what's God working on in you this year? Absolutely. And like I, I definitely want to say that, that I am so, so far from perfect. And I still have so, so many um, troubles and issues and struggles. And, and even lately, like I, I meet with some, um, you know, close girlfriends that I can form with. And just three days ago, I was saying, guys, I feel so distant from God. Like, I feel so distant from him. And so even though I'm coming up here saying, like, I love dating Jesus, and, and that's really true, but I still go through my seasons, like, right now where I'm like, I actually don't know how to relate to him in, in those kind of the middle of the journey times. And so, and I think 
like even being honest coming up to to doing this I was so nervous because again I still have this I guess this fear in me that I'm like oh they're not gonna like me after this or I'm gonna say the wrong thing and so I'm forever working on on becoming more and more like Jesus through those those fears that I struggle with through those anxieties through through those um I think especially like shame um so yeah I'm, I'm so far from perfect please come chat to me anytime about it I'm an, I've an, I'm an open book but yeah yeah um, Brie, we just uh, we appreciate your honesty in, in going there to those hard places with us and entrusting that. And um, we're just so proud to have you a part of our church family, you know, and what you bring and who you are. But as a light bearer for Jesus, it's like a, uh, that picture of like a broken pottery kind of thing with the light of Jesus in there. And it's like he shines through all the cracks, right? All our brokenness is like the, the points where Jesus shines through. And I think today, as you've shared, we've caught the heart of Jesus shining through your story. And I think for all of us, there's something to think about, whether it's um, how we want to grow this year or how we want to spend time with Jesus or are we letting him into those valleys and places. You've left us with a lot of food for thought. So I just want to honour you for your vulnerability. And I thought, church, do you mind if we just pray for Brie? Um, because I'm just aware that when you get up and share, um, you bring up all the pain, right? You bring up all the things that maybe are spoken or unspoken, and you walk out of here sometimes carrying some of that. So I guess my prayer is that um, anything that God has brought to the surface today, that again, he would continue to bring healing and transformation too. But also prayer for 2023 for you, that this God journey just continues to go deeper. Yeah, so. please. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks yeah, for no listening, worries. guys. Let's pray, huh? <laughs> Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for your story at work in Bree's life. God, we thank you for her honesty and her vulnerability this morning. And Lord, we just thank you that in those dark moments, in those difficult moments, that you met her there and that you called her into something better. And so, Jesus, we thank you for that call on her life, for the growth that she's experienced, for the ministry that she gets to be a part of at LL. And so, Lord, I pray for your covering over her heart today as she goes out from this place. Lord, that you protect her from the voice of the enemy that wants to suggest that she has nothing to offer. And in Jesus' name, we rebuke that and say that is not true. Lord, that she has something to offer because she has you. And so I pray that you would help her to keep her eyes fixed on you, that in those moments with you, that she would just, just grow in her knowledge of who you are and how much you love her. And God, I pray that you would keep using her in that ministry space, in our church space, in our communities and beyond as a light bearer for you. And so we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.